welcome to the 24-hour conference on global organized crime podcast from the Global Initiative Against Transnational Organized Crime. I'm Jack Megan Vickers. The 24-hour conference on global organized crime took place online in November 2020 and was organized by the European Consortium of Political Research Standing Group, the Centre for Information and Research on Organized Crime, the International Association for the Study of Organized Crime and the Global Initiative Against Transnational Organized Crime. Hundreds of academics, researchers, journalists and others from around the world gathered together to present and discuss the latest research in organized crime. We've selected just 14 of them for this podcast series. But I would encourage you to head over to the website oc24.globalinitiative.net where you can find recordings of other sessions. In this episode, you'll hear the session Vietnamese Organised Crime in Czech Republic. Today's session is um, a book interview. So the book um, in the book of discussion is Vietnamese Organised Crime in Czech Republic. And here with me today are Miroslav Nutina, Philip Kraus and Hai Luang. Um, so Miro- Miroslav and Philip are the co-authors of the Vietnamese Organized Crime in Czech Republic book, um, and I would bring some critical uh, perspective and also um, posing questions to, to the um, authors for the book session today. So I'm just running through some housekeeping um, ruin agenda for today's um, session. Um, I would start with introducing the co-authors, and then I would um, give the floor to Hai to to Oh, no. Yeah, I, I will start by introducing the co-authors and then I can um, give a few remarks about the book. And then um, um, yeah, the floor will be back to Miroslav and Philip for presenting the book um, and just giving you a taste and overview of uh, what the book is about. And then we would have a short interview of, um, between Hai and, and Miroslav and Philip, and then we open the floor to discussions and questions um, from the audience. So if you could please um, write in the chat box any questions you might have, um, and then we would um, start collect um, start collecting them. And um, and yeah, I, I would read them out loud to the co-authors later. Thanks, everyone. So today with us um, are Miroslav Notina. Miroslav is a senior researcher at the Institute of International Relations in Prague. He specializes in social anthropology and cultural criminology, um, and of course, um, on Southeast Asia countries. Recently, he is focusing on Vietnamese organized crime, geopolitics of drugs, and also wildlife crime. Together with Philip Krauss, Nortina um, published multiple books and articles on um, the world of drugs in the Czech Republic, international organized crime in Czech Republic, organized crime in Europe in general, also the crime networks in Vietnamese dias- diasporas, um, the Czech Republic case, as well as the role of Vietnamese criminal networks in drug crimes, and the um, fate and future of um, white lab trade regulatory regimes, the case of um, CITES and renal horn trafficking. And um, with us also Philip Kroos, um, who is a senior researcher and lecturer um, in the Department of Asian Studies at the Palaki University. He got his doctoral PhD degree at the National Chiao Tung University in Taiwan. His research interests include social and cultural anthropology of Vietnamese um, of the Vietnamese society, also the Vietnamese literature, Western critical philosophy, post-colonial studies in contemporary Southeast Asia, and um, Vietnamese migration and international relations in Southeast Asia. Before um, um, being the lecturer, he was a former policeman um, responsible for combating Vietnamese organized crime. Um, with the Czech Police um, Unit, um, the Organized Crime Detection Unit. He also published several books and also monographs on the issues, including Boston Tortures, Rice Grants, Vietnamese Crime Networks, and in Czech Republic, and also their international dimensions. 
So um, we are sure with you that, yeah, uh, today with us, the co-authors are really the expert on Vietnamese organized crime effect. And I'm passing on to Hai for a couple of remarks. And then um, if Miroslav and Philip, please, um, yeah, um, um, start with your presentation. That would be great. Hi, the floor is you. Thank you so much, T. And uh, yeah, good evening from to Melbourne. And uh, yeah, hi, everyone around the world. Uh, frankly, uh, uh, we are focusing on GI conference. It's the first ever, the same slogan from ZI, the DOC. It's a very interesting, uh, this conference. I follow the, nearly the 10 sessions until now. Very interesting with uh, diverse background and different topic regarding to uh, DOC. And now the, my last one, they come back with the Vietnamese background related uh, organized crime in the uh, Czech Republic. Uh, I'm very happy to uh, uh, share moderator with the three and uh, discuss more detail with the two uh, author, Philips and uh, Miroslav, also my colleagues. Uh, last year, when I first time contact with uh, both of these uh, uh, those authors, um, I'm very interesting because uh, seven uh, years ago, when I started my uh, PhD in uh, Melbourne, uh, so my first paper also focusing on to compare uh, Vietnamese uh, criminal syndicates in uh, overseas. I mean, the, the poorest uh, communities. I compare among the five countries, including SEC, UK, uh, Australia, Netherlands, uh, and Canada as well. Uh, a, yeah, very interesting uh, when I look for the, uh, the, what any difference I ask myself because I also spent 20 years to teaching and uh, research in the police academy in the Vietnam before the shift in the Melbourne now. And uh, it's my personal question always ask myself what is going on with the Vietnamese organized crime around the world, particularly with the former Soviet Union and uh, luckily, and uh, I contact and uh, catch up with uh, uh, me, uh, Mr. Lars first, and uh, and later on with the Philip. And uh, we're very happy to contact together. Three months ago, when I think both those uh, author uh, don't know the ZI conference, very interesting. I uh, introduced officially, and uh, very luckily, both of them accepted to join this uh, this uh, section. Now, before I uh, move on to the uh, floor for Flip and uh, Ms. Sholas, uh, uh, share some uh, briefly PowerPoint by uh, themselves. I want to share a very short summary uh, regarding to this book. Uh, I also the, uh, submit my the, uh, book review on trends in the organized crime by Spinger. Hopefully, they accepted and published shortly uh, for this, uh, this book. Uh, I think as the first study in uh, Central uh, European countries, this book explained on the ability of Vietnamese shadow businessmen and criminal delinquencies at one part of the Czech Republic's criminal underworld. Uh, after collapse of Soviet Union in 1989, both of the authors, particularly with uh, Philip, he uh, shared a time uh, as a former uh, detective in the Czech Republic. And uh, therefore, there's a primary data is very, very uh, resourceful. And uh, uh, they use the in-depth interviews with several law enforcement agencies, uh, including with the Vietnamese the porous uh, community in uh, Praga. The authors uh, analysis deeply about the nature of the structure and modus operandi of Vietnamese organized crime, focusing on two individual component, the respected man and criminal boss. It is very interesting. Uh, I, I surely, if you read detail uh, their book, you can look for the, the specific information, why they argued Vietnamese organized crime in the Czech Republic, mainly based on their traditional village mentality. And 
immigrants exploitation strategies. Uh, yeah, uh, nearly 200 pages uh, for this book. I'm very interesting and uh, happy as one part uh, to uh, uh, book review for this uh, book and uh, both of uh, my colleagues. Now, uh, if, uh, I would like to introduce and uh, take the floor, both of them, to uh, present their, their some slides. Um, I'm now giving the floor to Miroslav and Philippe, please, if you could please introduce shortly um, yourself, um, in addition to my introduction, if there's anything you would like to add, and then, yeah, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you, Tian Hai, for great introduction of us and of our book. It, it is perfect. So I will go directly and very briefly to the to the topic. I mean, maybe it will be more useful for we have very brief time for it. Uh, maybe what what the book is about? It's about organized crime in diaspora, about relation of crime and, and diaspora. So this, this is this is the main purpose of the book. What is the Diaspora, Vietnamese diaspora. What does it mean? It means four and a half million people around the world are distributed in more than 100 countries. So it's really, really quite a big population. There are big communities in the United States, big com with Vietnamese communities in Canada, with big Vietnamese communities in French, in Germany, in Russia. Et Etc. These, uh, these communities are results of various historical processes. Uh, these processes started in pre-colonial colonial and colonial times. They continued through the war in Indochina and in the times of communist regime in, in uh, Vietnam. And then after uh, reform process, uh, which started in 1986 in Vietnam. So uh, the, many people were, are go, were going from Vietnam abroad. Uh, and uh, these established communities has, has many specific because of cultural background, language background, etc. So, so uh, majority of members of these communities are people who are going abroad to improve their lives and improve their lives of, for their children. But together with it, also the specific uh, specific kinds of crime appeared inside the communities. So, uh, it, and uh, the Czech Republic is not an ex some exception of it. Yeah, uh, this is a this problem exists exists from the beginning in in uh, of the existence of Vietnamese diaspora in the Czech Republic, and uh, continues to, to be a serious problem till now. So, in fact, uh, especially at the beginning after democratic changes in 1989 in the Czech Republic, uh, we know that there is something something wrong in inside the community the, because of some criminal cases were detected, some criminal cases were investigated inside. The community, but we, in fact, we know very little about it, uh, about, about the structure of community, about the structure of criminal organization inside the community, about the body operandi. So, so uh, it was the main purpose of our research, which started in finally in 2007. In fact, we both, Philip and I, we started the criminological research more more earlier. We are in the in the business for 30 years already. So it's not, but definitely we focus on on this problem as a researcher, as academics uh, in uh, 2007, and continue this re this research till now. Uh, we published several several materials. Several, several articles, mostly, unfortunately, mostly in Czech. So it was the, the problem because it, it wasn't submitted to, to a broader, broader English speaking community. But definitely in 2019, we decided to, to publish a book, uh, some, something like a summary of our research, updated summary of our research, and uh, in and we uh, we have done it. So this the, this this book is the result of this of this previous long time long term research. Uh, uh, this book is based on uh, based, uh, based mainly on three research projects, yeah, which we we combined together and uh, finally fi fi finally synthesized. Uh, this uh, this research board was done at. Of international relations in Prague uh, and uh, at the Palsky University Olomouc. Please, next slide, if, if I can have. I have seen just first slide. Next one. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I forgot about it. 
Uh, so, uh, ba basically, uh, what we asked first, <laughs> there were two main problems connected to this research. First, <laughs> how to penetrate community, because the community was relatively closed and uh, there were very little, little contact inside the community. And the second problem was how to penetrate security forces also, because of there was not not uh, not too many published research information about it. So there was uh, we, we needed to establish two uh, two kinds of uh, of uh, cooperations. Uh, so uh, so finally we decided pro uh, uh, strategically to divide the project to, on to, to two parts. First, focused on the commu on community. A second, focus uh, on the security forces and their information. And then we started co combine the, these two two sources. For the for the cooperation inside community, of course, you cannot go inside the community as, and ask about crime, especially me. Not <laughs> it's it's impossible. So uh, we uh, we started uh, we started to arrange uh, to arrange uh, some. Contacts with with the people inside inside community, uh, engage some uh, some assist, assistance of Vietnamese origin, and they started to, to pose questions in, inside the community. But in fact, not too much about the crime itself, about criminal cases, but about the general situation inside the community. You know, it was very important to, for to, for us to know the structure of community, who are who are the main persons, etc. Uh, simply simply how the how the community lives, and then we we started to use another another. Another source from from security and uh, collect information from them, and we we started to compare these two kinds of sources together and uh, to create the synthetic synthetic picture picture of the of the of the problem. So uh, finally, finally we we synthesize our, our our book from this from this uh, from this uh, this the various sources with various various uh, various. Uh, various informations. Just before um, Heinz takes the floor, I apologize that I forgot to introduce Hai as well. I guess one of the disadvantages of the 24 hour conference is that there are so many interesting sections that you really stick to 24 hours. And then when you moderate the next day, then you, you tend to forget things. So um, Dr. Hai Luong um, is an honorary principal research fellow at the IMIT University um, in Melbourne, and he spent over 20 years researching, teaching in police institutions in Vietnam. He is specifically focusing on transnational organized crime in Asia, um, policing and also police training. Um, he obtained his um, PhD, um, Doctor of Philosophy in Criminology in 2017, and, um, uh, and he just published a, a recent book on transnational drug trafficking across Vietnam and Laos border last year. So hi, the floor is you, yours. Thank you, thank you so much, T. Never mind. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much uh, with the, uh, uh, my uh, colleagues, uh, Philip and Michel Arts, with the uh, very briefly information regarding to your new book. Uh, very interesting. Uh, yeah, the same tea as uh, I spent more than uh, 20 years uh, teaching and research on the transnational crimes, including uh, with the uh, uh, Vietnamese uh, overseas. Uh, but it's quite hard to collect the data. Think about that, we have uh, two sides. 10 years ago, when I was a uh, research and uh, lecturer in the Polit Academy in the Vietnam, most of Vietnamese uh, criminologists, uh, they just only the image, what's going on in the overseas with the, our community, including the uh, Czech uh, uh, Republic and the other countries where the Vietnamese and the Poros communities are living and working. Uh, we not really understood what's the nature and organized structure of the organized crime by the Vietnamese syndicates there. And also, so what is the really distinguished modus operandi they conducted in the overseas? How, how can we compare with the nature in the Vietnam? Because, you know, after Doi Mới, 1986, particularly more than 10 years before that, with the four Saigon, 1975, a lot of Vietnamese, uh, we, for example, now I based on in the Melbourne, we, we call it the port people. Very different background. 
but after đổi mới 1986, a lot of people, including with the education or the uh, immigration for the economic change, uh, come to Europe, particularly Central Europe, including Czech Republic. Most of the Vietnamese overseas there, the same yeah, Philip and uh, Miroslav's uh, proof and share in their book. They are very work, hard work and uh, make uh, very good points. However, unfortunately, of course, where the uh, economy comes, the crimes may become there together. That's why the, uh, I agree with the Philip's views has some symbiotic relations between uh, legal and illegal business men uh, alongside with the respect, respect man. That's why I very love the two terms by the Phillips and M Miros last uh, use, respect respected man and criminal boss. What is the relationship between the uh, respected man and criminal boss in the same public? Uh, yeah, in the comeback with uh, my uh, uh, ambitions, uh, I look for the, all the around the world with the foreign scholars and even the Vietnamese citizen uh, scholarship uh, who are the researching in the Vietnamese organized crime. It is my intention, maybe it's next time, for the edited book with the Vietnamese criminal syndicate in the uh, uh, us communities. I know the... Uh, uh, this audi audience we including with uh, Dr. Dan Silverstone in the UK because uh, I know he's uh, a lot of hesitation with uh, some first few tips when he uh, conducted with the police in the Vietnam. Uh, yes, yeah. we will discuss more detail later. Come back with the Philips and uh, Miros book. I have uh, some of the uh, more detailed question in order to make clearly about the contribution from these uh, authors. My first question is, where do you get your ideas to involve Vietnamese organized crime and introduce it in English version? Although you have already published several pages in the Czech language before. It's my first question. For me, maybe. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you are. No, yeah, it's true. It is, uh, it is a low time process. From my side, in fact, I started to, uh, to let me say, to study ethnic crime uh, already at the early 1990s because, of, you know, it was a very specific situation in the Czech Republic in, in, in the early 90s. Uh, the, before revolution, the country was closed. But after, in, in, after revolution, in two years, uh, organized crime groups from four continents appeared on this very small territory of 10 million people, you know. And he really didn't know what to do with them, yeah, <laughs> because it, there were new strategies, new philosophy of crime, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, in fact, in fact, the Vietnamese crime was quite silent in this in this uh, criminal environment. There was nothing, nothing too much visible. Yeah. So, but gradually there appeared that there really exists something inside, inside the community, community inside the diaspora. So the these ideas spread from this side and from other side because. So I'm interested in Asian, Asian crime, so I focus on this. And they, they I met, then I met Philip, and he was a former policeman specialized in Asian crime, and we we, fo we found a common common language for in this, and we started to cooperate to started started this research. In fact, the two monographies were published in Czech before. Yeah, uh, but uh, the last monography was published already uh, in 2012, and so uh, we needed to up to date to, to our research and also to also to bring it to broader pub uh, to public to broader public to criminologists also to share to share information because you, we we have seen same as you had as you had seen, so <laughs> there are. Many people in the world, uh, including Dan Silverstone, <laughs> who are in, uh, interested in this kind of crime, but uh, there is not uh, com comparative studies. There are not comparative study in this in this field. So we we started like we, we decided to make something like a pilot study, a, a case study, uh, for in uh, in this in the framework of this broader research. Don't have to do it. Thanks very much. Very interesting. Thanks a lot, everyone, um, especially to Miroslav and Philip for the great session and to everyone for very um, interesting and 
um, yeah, meaningful um, question. I wish you all a great day and um, great remain um, in great conference. There, there are still three, um, at least three time slot left. So thanks very much. You were listening to Vietnamese organized crime in Czech Republic. If you'd like to get more information on this topic and the speakers, head over to the conference website, oc24.globalinitiative.net. There you can also find videos of most of the talks, including a number of discussions that are not part of this podcast series. This was the 24-hour conference on Global Organized Crime podcast. I'm Jack Megan Vickers. Thanks for listening.